if you're watching this, it's because you're a video editor that's annoyed that you keep getting ignored by clients. You've sent messages out before, but nobody really listens to you. You know that your work is worth something, but it's like nobody even gives you a chance. And even when they do, it's like you go back and forth a little bit, but as soon as you say the price, they ignore you. In this video, I'm going to break down pretty much the largest reason why this one idea encompasses every single reason why you're getting ignored by creators. And imagine knowing that they're going to respond to you because you've constructed your offer and your page and like yourself as an editor in such a way that they'd feel stupid not to work with you that's the point that we're going to get you to so pretty much the only reason why you get ignored by clients it all comes down to leverage so leverage is basically the difference between what you put in and then what you get out so imagine like a seesaw like that if it's heavier here that's more leverage and the further back it's more leverage so whatever you get out it goes higher like i'll have like a quick diagram i'll get my editor to put it in but for us as editors leverage is essentially we're putting in let's say the potential clients we have this many conversations with this many clients that's our input that our output is how many creators actually work with us for how many creators we reach out to how many of them actually hire us the more leverage you have so the further back you are the harder you pull that means that for a certain amount of creators that you reach out to the more clients you're going to get and i know this sounds a bit wishy-washy so i'm going to put it into proper terms for you so imagine there's two editors right editor a editor b both of these editors are going to reach out to 100 clients if they both reach out to 100 clients, which one's going to get more clients? It's going to be the one with better editing, right? But what if they both had the same like editing style? They were both super smooth. They were both good editors. It would be the one with the better portfolio. Now, let's say they both had the same portfolio and they had the same smooth editing style. Who would get more clients? It would be the guy that sends the more concise message. So the more of these we have, the more likely it is that we're going to get a higher return on investment for the time we put in talking to clients. Better communication, the more followers that you have on your page that you use to reach out to them all of these things they're points of leverage and there's hundreds of them and the underlying concept of all of this is the more leverage you have the more opportunities you'll get and the better those opportunities will be as well so by this point you might be asking how do you actually build leverage because it's all good that i've named the skills and everything but what's the actionable thing that i can do malice i like to say this phrase called do do more, do better. You're watching this as a video editor. So it's like, you already know that you have some skill. It doesn't matter if you're already working with some huge guys or you're just getting started. You have some sort of editing skill. And maybe in the past, you've tried taking that editing skill and thinking, okay, how can I take my editing skill to the next level? Maybe I already know Premiere Pro pretty well, I guess. Let me try out After Effects. Let me try, oh, this new AI tool looks pretty cool. Oh, could I join the server and network and maybe these guys could give me ops. It's like, you're trying all of these things to improve your editing. When in reality you would have gotten a higher return if you just did more of the same thing and made that same thing better and it's like these two things kind of go hand in hand because the more you do something naturally the better you get at it and when you get better you get faster so that means you do more of it and it feeds into itself let me give a proper example for this so over my last few years of editing pretty much i grew my brand my name on twitter over this thing called smooth editing it's become my own style now it's like i have hundreds of people using it now because i kind of like founded that term like before i started posting nobody really spoke about smooth premiere pro editing it's like i would post my work i would say oh by the way i edited this all in premiere pro and people be like nah bro shut up like you're lying and what it really highlighted to me i didn't know i was doing it at the time but premiere has a lot more potential that than people think it's not the fact that premiere is limited it's that people jump ship way too early they think that the grass is greener on the other side when in reality the grass is greener where you water it because when you gain the simple skills of learning Premiere Pro, being able to say like, oh, okay, I know the basics in Premiere Pro. Let me learn After Effects so I can do the more advanced stuff. It's like, no, you're now just a decent editor in Premiere and now you're a new editor in After Effects. And it's like, okay, man, it's, but I'll just learn how to do After Effects really well as well. But when you try to do two things at the same time, you're never going to see the same results as someone that's putting their heart and soul into one software. The reason I became such a good Premiere Pro editor is because while I had all this noise of like, People saying, oh, you should try After Effects. Oh, have you tried DaVinci? Have you tried this one plugin? It's like, I literally said no to all of it. And all I did was sit in Premiere and do more of Premiere and get better at Premiere. These people are trying to jump ship and like trying to find the next thing to improve their editing when the reason they're not improving their editing is because they keep switching. You're not staying at a software long enough for you to see the results. Like I say this all the time, the results in any area of life and especially with a skill you're learning, the results are exponential. So for a long period of time, you might not see crazy results for the time you're putting in, but it kind of compounds and then suddenly 
suddenly just takes off. Every time you do something that isn't what you've already started doing, just for the sake of like making quick money or oh, this is trending, you reset that curve. You spent years learning how to edit. You spent months like learning this style and suddenly, oh, this thing's trending. Let me reset my graph. And now I have to do that again. And it's like, oh, After Effects, let me start again. Oh, I heard Iman Gaji style works really well. And it's like, you never reap the rewards of the effort you put in. The way you're going to see the most results is when you do stick with one thing for long enough. It's when you stay with Premiere so long, you learn the curves inside out. When you let go of all the noise that people say like around you, like, oh, use this one retention trick, use this three act story chart to no, know you're going to see the most results by focusing on the one thing that matters most. And that is your visual editing. Storytelling, retention, these are very important. Don't get me wrong, but nobody's going to sit through your attempt at making a story when with all due respect, your visuals aren't that good yet. And it's okay. Everyone starts there, but you need to focus on the right things. And I hope I don't seem like an arsehole saying this, but I think I got lucky that I managed to stay focused on just Premiere. But I see so many editors today kind of deviating and kind of not following trends. I think following trends can work, but it's just that it, when it disrupts your long-term progress and you keep jumping to different things, that's when I really recommend not looking into these like trendy things. Like I'm not a motion designer. I don't know 3D stuff. I don't know how to use Blender. I don't know how to like perfect Iman Gaji style. I don't know that, but that's okay. I know how to make a video look good in my style. I already had the foundation of Premiere Pro, which you probably do as well. And I decided to just max out my potential with that. And even if you think that you've maxed out your potential, I promise you there's so much more that that's possible. Until you see someone else doing it, you won't think it's possible. Everyone thought I was using After Effects when I posted my Premiere work, but it's just because no one on Premiere stuck on Premiere long enough. They all veered off to another software to try improve their editing skills and like height, height and their ceiling when they weren't even at their ceiling already. They hadn't reached their potential and they're trying to like learn somewhere else. It's hard to explain, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. I've been editing content for about maybe two years, a year and a half. Before that, I was editing Fortnite videos. I've been editing on Premiere since day one and I only started like a couple years ago, but then I'm able to charge literally 1,000, 1,000, 100, 1,200 per video. And if you don't believe me, I know there's going to be some kid that doesn't believe me. The guys that are following me know I'm telling the truth. You can find my portfolio in my description. You can go on my Twitter. You can scroll down on my Twitter. You will see every single post that I've posted over the last three years. So you know I'm not lying when I say this. What I really recommend you do is figure out what your ultimate selling point is. So for me, it was always smooth editing in Premiere Pro. Now, you don't need to tell clients this explicitly. People will find out on their own, but you want to tell yourself this because a lot of the time, it's other people telling us new ideas and it's our job to stay disciplined and make sure we're the ones staying on track. It's not their fault. These other people, yeah, they mean good. But unfortunately, it does mean long term when you do keep listening to everyone, that's when you kind of go in all directions and you never focus your attention in one thing and actually see results. So write down what do you want to be known for? For me, it was always smooth editing in Premiere Pro. If I kept doing this one thing, I know that I would become the best at it. And that's exactly what you see with my editing now. Nobody else does this on Premiere Pro, bro. But before going into the second reason why creators don't reach out to you, why clients don't respond back, I want to tell you a little story. So I'm sitting in the school cafeteria, my friend's sitting across me and we're talking about business ideas. We're talking about drop shipping, Forex, like SMMAs, just like Iman Gaji says, YouTube, bro, we even considered like if we could open a chicken and chip shop. And naturally, because I'm an editor, I kind of opened the idea to him like, oh, have you ever looked into editing? Because there's a lot of people trying to be YouTubers. Like there's literally tens, not hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, in fact, in the world that want to be like online creators right now. You want to be an editor in this day and age. It's like, there's a lot of money in it. He's listening to me. But by the end of it, we go back home and the next week comes around. We're sitting at the exact same table in the cafeteria sitting across each other and he's kind of telling me that he's not too sure about this whole editing thing. It's like sure it works in theory but how do I know it's actually gonna work for me? And I'm telling him like bro trust me it's like there's a lot of money in this like there's literally tens of thousands of editors that are making full-time incomes from this. It's, there's a lot of money here bro trust me. And we're having like a back and forth and like I'm genuinely so adamant on this to the point where it's like I'm explaining what I do in my own career. I'm like I'm showing him my 
my portfolio i'm showing like these are the people i work with this is literally like how much i make i don't show my income off so it's like i'm showing him all of this but i know that he's just gonna say yeah 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 and ignore my advice just like last time now another week passes same cafeteria same seat same friend and it's like we're already 15 20 minutes into our conversation and i haven't even been able to speak at all he was going on and on point after point telling me about how much he's learned about editing it's like he learned this new effect he learned how to like use premiere he's learned how to do it like his first video he's just finished his first video and he's showing it to me he finally took my advice and now he's thanking me for genuinely like believing that it was the right thing for him to do it genuinely felt like such a proud dad type of moment where i've taught this guy this thing and he's seen the real world results of it and it's at this point that i'm realizing that it was actually my fault it took him three weeks to take my advice for the first week and the second week i never gave him a reason to listen to my advice like for me to be recommending editing it was the exact same as me recommending dropshipping or smma like it had no real value but when i finally showed him my portfolio and gave him a reason that i believe editing is the right thing to do when i showed him what's possible when i showed him i've done it myself and now i'm helping hundreds of other editors like you're just another person that i can help that's when he started implementing it and in the same way when clients don't respond to you when you get ignored it's not because they're a bad person they hate you or anything you just haven't shown them what they needed to see people will only listen to us if we have something to offer them like the reason you watch these videos is because okay you might like me but i'm giving you valuable information and that's why thousands of editors listen to me like it's a value exchange i get your time your attention you get to grow your editing career but imagine i was trying to tell you all of this and i just didn't have a portfolio to show you i didn't have my twitter page that you could see like oh i've worked with this people i didn't have the right tips to give you you wouldn't listen to me and in the dynamic between you and a creator like a youtuber when you're trying to work with them you need to give them the exact reasons why you are that person that they should work with it's no good saying like oh bro trust me i can do it or even saying like oh i maximize retention if you haven't worked with someone that has like a high retention video and getting a lot of views if you haven't been a part of that video you have nothing to back up the fact that you maximize retention like it's the same as me making a video like oh how to become a billionaire like bro i'm not a fucking billionaire do you know what i mean so if i try to teach something i haven't done it just looks stupid so why I recommend doing is make a physical list like write it down on notion or even write it down on paper write a list of the characteristics that you want a creator to see in you smooth editing good pacing maybe it is maximized retention you're a reliable editor you give stuff in on deadlines so make a list of the characteristics that you want to show a creator now look for your page and portfolio and make sure that it's clear you live by these values like when you're speaking to a creator it's not even like a creator knows you all they know is your online presence and your page and your work they don't know the real you so when you say that oh my actual editing work is better than in my portfolio that doesn't matter to them all that matters to them is what they can see and they're going to base their judgment off of that and i know i said this before but i really hope i don't come across as an arsehole by saying this because this is something i used to do it's like i used to say like oh i maximize retention i make sure you get a lot of views i use this technique but my entire portfolio was fucking fortnite highlights bro i have nothing to back it up was it any wonder i had so many creators ignoring me i just wish i had someone back then telling me like looking through my message and saying that bro you look like an idiot when you say that stop saying that it literally serves you better to just show your work and let your work speak for you like alex homozi talks about this all the time he's some big entrepreneur some of you will know him and he says there's basically only like three reasons why someone wouldn't be progressing in their career or life that's your skills your traits or your beliefs your skills are things that you can actually do so like your actual editing that's your skills so you might be lacking your skills but more often than not it's your beliefs or traits traits are things like patience discipline like so not procrastinating things like that and then your beliefs are what are your views on the world which may or may not be true and for me for the longest time i had that belief of like oh if i just tell them that i'm good at storytelling if i tell them that i, I maximize retention then it is a good thing i believe that to be true but that belief wasn't true so me breaking that belief served me in like tens of thousands of ways bro and a lot of the time it is breaking these beliefs these limiting beliefs that serves us the longest long term and it's like this is why mentors are so useful i have a mentor myself so i teach other editors but obviously i'm not like some fucking god sent like child yeah who knows everything there's a lot of things i don't know so i have a mentor myself and it's like shout out tanim man this guy's my uncle's university mate the guy's name's tanim and whenever i'm running through my business running through like okay this is what i'm doing in my life he'll say like oh you shouldn't be doing that i used to do that when i was younger and i realized later in my life that his is fast route his the roadmap to get like more successful this guy's doing like 120k a month so whatever he says it's like okay fair enough i should be listening to it like i'm paying the 
this guy $400 an hour to talk to him. So it's like, if I'm not listening to him, if I don't take his advice, that's probably the quickest way for me to take that money that I've spent and just burn it away. If you see someone that's done better than you, that's lived the path that you want to go down, then you'd be an idiot not to listen to them. You'd be an idiot to try say like, no, actually I'm right. Like, actually I think that I should be doing storytelling. I think I should say I maximize retention. Like if you see someone that's lived the path of what you've done and you still go against it, it's like this guy clearly knows something you don't. That's why you are where you are and that's okay, but you can't be so like close minded and just like big headed to think that you know all the answers. If you knew all the answers, you wouldn't be watching a video about why clients ignore you. And I promise you, I say this out of love. Like I don't want you to waste years learning something that I already put the years in to learn. Like I spent years messing up with clients. I've been ignored by tens of thousands of creators, tens of thousands of creators. When you get rejected that many times, you end up learning a few lessons along the way. And I really don't want you to be making the same mistakes. Like I was a dumbass over my years of editing, over my years of like my personal growth as well. From the mistakes that I've done, make it so at least one of us learns from them. I used to think that the reason I'm not getting clients is that they didn't exist. And you see that with thousands and thousands of editors that don't get clients. It's like, like you need to realize that there's enough clients out there. You just need to provide enough value so that they choose you. And I've pretty much dedicated all of my work to making sure that it's you that they choose because I've already gone through that journey and it's genuinely changed so much of my life like I speak about this all the time but the way you live your life when you know that money like no longer is an issue I know it's like money is just like whatever but when you know that you're doing something you love and you're making money from it from the comfort of your home your parents are finally on board with it you're able to like go out whenever you want it's like I don't go out often I'm not a material guy but being able to do it whenever I want that's what I think is so satisfying with making editing and taking your hobby and taking it to the next level like you were doing this shit for free anyways why not make a little bit more money from it? It's like you're sitting in the same room, the same desk, you're going to be doing the same work. You're still editing. You might as well get paid for the time that you're putting in. I really hope you got value out of this. This is the point where we do the YouTube shit. Like, subscribe. This is the type of content. If you mess with it, then yeah. Also, we have the Discord down below. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Peace.